Here we have all of the parts that we need to assemble the y-axis for the hypercube evolution. So we have four printed parts, the first being the uh, xy stepper motor mount, the xy idler mount and of course the mirrored parts for the other side of the printer. For the uh, stepper motor mount we have of course we've got our stepper motor here, we have one uh, button head screw with M5 uh, T-slot nut, two M6 button heads which will go in the top two holes. We have a uh, 20 millimeter long M3 uh, socket head screw which is used to clamp the parts together. Some screws there to mount the stepper motor onto the XY uh, stepper motor mount. And uh, we just note that uh, one of these holes here is countersunk and we do that just to clear the bearing uh, so it can actually go over the top of the screw. Here we have the um, the XY idle amount. Now it mounts using one M5 button head screw and T-slot nut and one M6. Here we see the uh, yeah, 20 tooth uh, idle pulleys. Now they, uh, they actually mount on this 30, mil 30 millimeter long M3 screw and depending on the thickness of your M3 washers you may need three or four of these washers to go between the two pulleys when it all gets mounted together. Again another 20, mil 20 millimeter long uh, screw to clamp all this together. Now I've pre-prepared these um, these parts by inserting the uh, threaded inserts there, as you can see one there, and for the XY idler bracket we have one here on the outside and one here in the top to accept the, uh, the screw. So uh, that's uh, parts for one, one side of the, uh, the printer and here we have the parts for the other side of the printer. Now just one point to note is that the XY idle mount needs to be mounted onto the, uh, the shaft before the pulleys go on. That's because the screw actually comes from the inside out towards the, um, towards the outside of the printer. Now just one, uh, one point to note when uh, using these brass threaded inserts, you may find that you actually just need to run a, uh, an M3 tap through just to clear any plastic that uh, might blind the hole. It makes putting the screws in a whole lot easier. So I'm going to uh, get this together now and then uh, I'll show you how it all looks when it's put together and then we'll mount it up to the frame. As mentioned, this is the first step of assembling the Y-axis. So here we've mounted the, the uh, XY idler bracket onto the, uh, the Y linear rail itself. So we do that for both sides and then we can then assemble the bearings into these, uh, into these brackets. And here we have the, uh, the assembled XY idler brackets. So the trick is not to over tighten the screws so that the bearings still, re the, uh, the idlers still turn quite nice and freely. So here we've turned the frame of the Hypercube Evolution upside down. This makes it uh, a little bit easier to assemble the, uh, the Y axis into the frame. So what we're going to do, first thing is, here in our L brackets, now this screw here is actually uh, used to mount the XY idler bracket. So we'll remove this scrub screw and in a similar fashion here at the front of the frame the screw for both of these on either side here is used to mount the XY stepper mount. So we'll remove those, uh, those scrub screws. Everything should stay relatively uh, in position due to these additional brackets and then we can just slip in the, uh, in the, the Y axis and tighten everything up. Fingers crossed. These are the M6, uh, M6 screws that we'll use to secure all these top screw holes.
And the same process for the, uh, the back of the mount here. That's how it goes together. So I'll, uh, I'll do the other side and uh, then we'll flip this over and then we'll mount up the, uh, mount up the stepper motors. So it's gone beer o'clock and the y-axis is, uh, is basically in. Stepper motors are on, um, so they uh, simply just mount up onto the brackets, as uh, I was saying before, just for that, that countersunk shorter screw there in the, uh, in underneath the, the rail there. So that's so that the bearings can slide up over the top and give a as much Y travel as we possibly can. Now, I have just noticed I've got one of these August bearings, which I think they may have slipped in the close tolerance version, because this one's nowhere near as free as this one here. So, um, don't think it'll be a huge issue, but um, you know, we'll see how it performs. So, um, one problem that you may have found that because we flip it over and actually remove some of those screws, you may end up with the top of your corner here not quite lining up where you would like it to be. So I'm going to, um, going to just uh, loosen this off a little bit and just lift this up just so that uh, everything's nice and flush and level on where it should be. Um, so that's basically it for the Y axis.